dudes. So it is Friday and uh, we are faves, fails, and findsing it. I'm really sad that you can't see my necklace. That sucks. I really like this necklace. It's from my rocks box. Free month down below. Um, it is a Kate Spade necklace with a little French bee on it and I'm living for it. I'm having one of those shapeshifter moments because lately going to work in the morning and stuff like that, I've just basically been a little hood rat. Like I just wear as little makeup as possible. I look like my teenage self and I just kind of like layer things until I'm warm in this very kind of like pathetic non Olsen twin kind of way. And then today I just like, I put on a full coverage foundation and I was just like, oh, this side of me exists. Let's open up a new dimension. So uh, guys, we're going to be going through a bunch of my favorites that I have been loving lately my fails that have not gone as well, uh, and my finds, things that I'm kind of, the jury's still out, but it gives you guys a little status of what I'm exploring at the moment, the products that I'm trying. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing that I wanna talk about here is this. <laughs> I went ahead and bought this, and you know, I actually just watched Abby Williamson's latest anti-haul, and she went off on subscription boxes, which I found really, really interesting. I talked to you guys in my Instagram Q&A. Somebody said, what are your favorite kinds of videos to watch? My favorite kinds of videos to watch are anything where someone is telling me their opinion, like their really strong, authentic opinion. I am not the kind of person who gets their feelings hurt when someone says something that I disagree with. So when she said like, I totally hate subscription boxes. I think that it's really stupid to spend your money on something. It's very consumerist to spend your money on something when you don't know what it is. And I was like, huh. I've really never thought about it that way. Like I never liked Birchbox because I think that like samples are kind of stupid, especially when it's stuff that I don't use. It just kind of rattles around and I totally get that from a consumerism standpoint. Like that's just overwhelming. It feels just like conspicuous consumption. But from the standpoint of Petivore, which is uh, the cruelty-free box that is the only one that I subscribe to currently, it's so that I can discover things that I've never heard of, which is, I think, the whole point of a subscription box. But I'm not going to go leave that in her comments because she already knows that people feel that way, you know? <laughs> That's the whole beauty of an opinion, right? My point is, I loved this and it came in my Petivore. It was very unsuspecting because it was just like a dumb little perfume sample, which really is so small it feels insignificant but when i opened it you guys watched me strug with that um but it smelled so good that i paid the 85 dollars to get the full size merry christmas to me i am so stinking obsessed with this so it is a scent profile of like oranges and some other stuff and then like a base note of spearmint i just bit my own tongue how does a 31 year old person bite their tongue while talking like you'd think i'd have the hang of it by now Anyway, um, how about some swatches? Yeah, cool, those are waterproof. So this is called Joyful by the brand My Daughter and it's a clean beauty, you know, like cruelty-free fragrance or whatever. Might not even be clean beauty. I'm not really sure whether Petivore like draws that distinction. They try, but <laughs> oh my God, you guys. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm just gonna take it in for a second. I am a cardinal sign, and I am the cardinal sign of spring. My sign, Aries, brings in springtime, and I feel like it's when I shine. And I think that that is why, also, I get so stinking excited about, like, bright fragrances, fresh things. This is the most fresh-smelling, brightest, happiest smell and I love it so much and it makes me really hype for spring. I don't know if you guys have this like where you live because I lived in like Kansas City and spring didn't really happen. It was like we just skipped it. It sucked, it was like it snowed all the way through May. But where I live in Austin, spring starts like end of February. Like you have these like crisp days but the sun is just like beaming down on you and then South by Southwest happens and everybody comes to town and they're like, this place is amazing. And then they're like, oh, I'm gonna move here. And then they like are here in August and they're like, what have I done? Spring is why I live here is because our spring is so gorgeous and it's so long. It literally goes from the end of February through like the middle of June. It's unbelievable, it's gorgeous and I had just digressed into talking about my favorite season, but uh, but this makes me feel springy. Yes, maybe I should put a flower crown on. Ah! I just knocked a rack of antlers off of my wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> it's not really spring colors, it's more fall. I made it like 
actually in the fall, but <laughs> I don't care. Okay, so um, I just I've talked about literally one thing for uh, seven and a half minutes, so that's cool. On to the next. So I mentioned in my brands that I wanted to try this brand right here, Necessaire. It is the uh, brand that was begun by a co-founder of Into the Gloss. So it is like, I don't know, I see it as kind of a sister company to Glossier, right? And it is very, very clean beauty body wash lotion. And they also do a, uh, like a sex gel. I'm just gonna leave that there. I got it in the scent Eucalyptus for the body wash and then the lotion is unscented. Let's talk about this first and foremost. So I think that the instructions live somewhere, but uh, not on the box. And so when you get this, I swear to God, that little mechanism, not intuitive at all. Because you're sitting there trying to turn it and the lid just keeps unscrewing and you're just like, what's happening? And so I ended up having to completely unscrew this and then I took a pair of like scissors or needle nose pliers, I don't remember, and I locked them inside the mechanism and unlocked it because I was like, something's obviously supposed to be happening here. It had this big foil piece over the top that by the way, I like broke a bunch of nails trying to get off. They basically told me that what you're supposed to do is give it one hard turn to the right, right when you get it. And then that will kind of start the mechanism and then it's very easy to just kind of, you know, open it up and, and use it properly. That was not my experience. It was definitely a lot more difficult than that. It says, for your body, the body wash is a daily multivitamin clean cleanser, a cleaner, for uh, skin health, scented with pure essential oils, apply all over body, massage for rich foam, rinse well. Formula contains vitamin A, B3, C, E, omega-6, omega-9, and antioxidants. You guys, this is pretty great. I'm not even gonna lie. And I think that the two of these together is like 40 something dollars. Like it's not $50, it's like 45 or 42 or something. That's kind of the same price as like, you know, the Glossier Body Hero, which I don't like at all. <laughs> I like the lotion okay, but the body wash is just such a pass for me. And so I wanted to, you know, and so I wanted to clean my body routine too. I think that this will be the year that I start paying more attention to my body skin as well as my face skin. I do really dig this. You get a ton O product. This is over a cup O product right here. It smells absolutely delicious. It does smell just you know, eucalyptus. And I do want to try the sandalwood. That's the only other fragrance that they do right now. It's a eucalyptus and a sandalwood. And I think it's because they're very like non-gendered. Um, so, it, you know, those are very like genderless uh, kind of fragrances. So, uh, and they're also very natural fragrances, very easy to, you know, get essential oils that smell like that. So yeah, it's got this little like, you know, him, her, whomever kind of, uh, you know, gender sign there uh, on there. And I feel like that's kind of a theme that I'm seeing, you know, the, the genderless bathrooms, the genderless products, everything. So, uh, you know, my husband's been using this, he likes it too. And it does actually suds up, which was, which is nice because the Glossier one drives me that shit crazy. The way that it's like an oil in a little pump and then nothing happens and you just use it all. I don't know, it confused me. Um, they're really not even fair to compare to one another, but I do I do really like this and I'm glad that I bought it. The lotion, um, I'm a little disappointed that it's unscented. I know that that's like a personal preference thing and if I really wanted to, I could like mix essential oil into it or something. I'm not gonna do that, that's stupid. But it says fragrance free, moisturize, tone, and strengthen. It also has vitamin A, B3, C, E, omega-6, omega-9, and antioxidants in it. Fast absorbing daily peptide with multivitamin moisturizer for skin health, fragrance free, apply all over the body, massage until absorbed. I know that there are going to be people out there who are like khaki. I know exactly why there's no fragrance in that and it's because X, Y, and Z and that's totally fine. I'm sure that there are really good reasons. I personally am coming from this like, you know, permanent 13 year old angle of going to Bath and Body Works and buying something that smells like food. And so uh, this, while unscented, it was, you know, something that I had to get past. Um, it's actually a really, really beautiful formula. <laughs> in fact, I didn't trust it at first because it's super lightweight and you know, I also don't love that it's just like a screw off cap. Like that doesn't really do it for me. I don't know. You think that it's just gonna kind of disappear because it is just so lightweight. It doesn't feel very emollient. It doesn't feel like Bath and Body Works ultra shea or whatever, um, which is kind of what I'm used to. But of course that's sort of the point, right? We're used to those kinds of things because they're probably full of synthetic, like, you know, ingredients and probably like carrageenan and stuff like that. But I was using it with a body oil first 
because I didn't trust it. I think just in my brain, I was like, this just feels so lightweight. There's no way it's any match for my ashy legs. And so I was using it with an oil and I was like, I don't really feel like this is doing anything. And then I used it by itself and I was like, oh no, this is amazing. <laughs> like I woke up in the morning after putting it on the night before and my legs still felt awesome. And I was like, how'd they do that? Cause this is real lightweight and my skin is real gnarly. So I think that there is some technology built into this formula because my legs, like I said, most things are no match for it. And I don't like using things like Aquaphor because they don't actually nourish. They just like lock moisture in and moisture out. It just is like an oil barrier. Like that doesn't really do it for me. I need something that's going to actually nourish on like a realistic level. And this actually does that. So I think this is gonna be one of those things that becomes kind of a mainstay for me. I don't really have any strong compulsion to cycle out my bath routine products that often. Like when I find something, I'm a-okay sticking with it. I cycle out makeup products because I wanna be able to share new things with you guys. I feel like that's my responsibility. Okay, next, this is kind of a fail and it's sort of a to be continued. So I went on Fall Lane and I decided to try a brand that is new to me and kind of like new to the space. I feel like it is very popular in like Spanish speaking YouTube videos, but I haven't seen a lot of English speaking YouTube videos talk about this. And I think it's because it wasn't available until pretty recently. So it is the brand Ere Perez and I bought the oat milk foundation and I got it in the shade honey, which will become significant in a moment. I also got the rice powder blush and bronzer in uh, Roma and I got the chamomile eye palette in Lovely. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these up real quick and show you guys because the fail here is that this foundation, I tried it yesterday, and it is the second lightest shade in their collection, and it is so dark on me. It is like, not just dark, but like, orange. You know how we have pink? This is orange on me, and I am very, very warm, typically. This is just uh, like so warm, it looks almost comical, like it's orange on my skin, which is just really not good. So I went ahead and ordered their porcelain shade just to see. And I mean, I don't want this to become about like skin tone and race, but uh, I'm making an assumption that because this is a, what, Mexican brand, that their shades are going to skew a little bit more towards the middle of like the tan category. And so the lightest shade is going to be kind of me. And then there's probably not going to be like a super, super porcelain shade kind of thing. Like they start getting warm pretty quickly. So uh, discovered that, gonna have to return this guy because it's not gonna work, but kind of sneak peek when I used it. Oh man, it's pretty. It is pretty, pretty, pretty. Like it has a cool texture to it. I'm really excited to share it with you guys when I get the right shade. So uh, Fall Lane's shipping is pretty quick as I've found. So uh, why are you like this? Why are you like this? I'm just trying to get you to do literally anything that makes sense and you just refuse and that's fine. On the same kind of note, I ordered their lighter shade of a blushing bronzer and it is still whoa dark, like way, way too dark for me. Um, I know that that probably doesn't seem like that, but it doesn't really have any um, shimmer or anything to cushion the blow, I guess I should say, when this goes on the skin. And I already have the Thrive Rhea bronzer that is in this very matte brown color. So I don't really need this and I think I'm going to return it as well. I thought that, you know, I was gonna just get the lighter shade. Maybe it would, because it's a blush slash bronzer, it might be a clean beauty replacement uh, for my Too Faced blushing bronzer because I would like to get away from this, but I don't think that this is gonna be that. And then look at this little baby palette. This wasn't very expensive, so I'm not like super, you know, annoyed or anything, but um, these, are not the most, I mean, they're just, they're really, really patchy. They're not the most pigmented thing in the world. And I'm just not sure that this needs to live in my collection. I just am not very impressed with that formula, like at all. And um, I might try them on my eyes, but as far as just swatching is concerned, I'm very so far uh, unimpressed. So. Um, they also have some like olive oil lipsticks that I might want to try, but what from what I've seen, they aren't 
like all of their stuff isn't on every place that they sell it. Falling didn't have the quinoa foundation, but they had the oat milk foundation, and I didn't see the lipsticks on Falling either. So I don't know. Um, I'm gonna return all of these and just go for the lightest color in the foundation to get started because I do, I just think that this is kind of a miss altogether, and partially because of me. <laughs> so. So let's talk about Drunk Elephant while my dog barks. I ordered the Littles, and so far I have some thoughts. I've been using it about a week now, maybe not completely a week, but let's go ahead and go through each of these. So the first one is the C Firma Day Serum. The jury is out here. It feels fine on my face. I've been wearing it during the day. It seems okay. It also smells like when you light a match which is one of my favorite smells in the world. So like, there's that. This right here, the Lala Retro Whipped Cream. OMG. This one is gonna be in my collection forever. It is the most luxurious, nourishing face cream. I'm obsessed with it. Like, if you have winter skin and your moisturizer is just not doing the trick, try this. It is so amazingly like, rich and gorgeous. Uh, I love this step in my routine. I love rubbing this all over my face. It makes me very, very happy. And I was watching Leanne's roundup of her favorites this year, and she included the polypeptide cream, and I'm like, that's tempting. But I really have very, very different skin than Leanne, and so I'm not sure that it would work for me if it worked for her kind of thing. She's a very oily complexion. And so um, I, I just am really pleased at this one, but I, I'm interested to hear you. I, a lot of you guys have tried a lot of these products, and so I'm interested to know kind of what you would recommend for dry skin types. Umbra Sheer Physical Daily Defense Broad Specs from Sunscreen SPF 30 for a zinc-based physical sunscreen. This doesn't give you a white cast and it actually has a really, really beautiful texture to it. Plus somehow, I'm pretty sure this is the one, it kind of smells like, like a vanilla or like some kind of cream. I'm not really sure. Oh no, it smells like, um, smooth and melty. So you know what those are? Those like weird mint creams with like the sprinkles on the bottom and they're all in like, you know, pastel shades. That's what this smells like when you put it on your face. I don't know why. While I like this, and I think it's really awesome to have a zinc-based sunscreen that doesn't give you that white cast, because I have this Zeta one, I've had it for years, and it is like bonkers. It's completely like blue-white. It looks absurd. It looks completely ridiculous. This is only SPF 30. My Glossier is SPF 35. It's a lot less expensive, and I just will probably not purchase the big thing of this because of that. Like, I just feel like the Glossier is a better value. <laughs> the next thing is this Best Number no. 9 Jelly Cleanser. Weird. This is weird because a jelly cleanser, I'm used to the Milky Jelly Cleanser from Glossier, like I said, and so this is, it doesn't behave like that at all. Like, the Milky Jelly Cleanser doesn't suds, and you can rub it all over the place, and it just kind of breaks everything down, but it preserves your moisture barrier. This claims that it's going to preserve your moisture barrier, but it just, I don't feel like it does. It gives me much more of a squeaky clean feeling and I'm not a big fan of that. Next is the uh, Shaba Complex Eye Serum. I really like this. I'm going to be honest, it's hard for me to necessarily, you know, speak to the efficacy of an eye cream or an eye serum after using it for like a week, but it feels really nice. I have high hopes for it and I am in the market for an eye cream. The Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil, this doesn't really serve a purpose for me. I don't need a face oil. I use enough kind of balancing products that I feel like I don't need that like crazy, crazy nourishing like I just don't need oil on my face every day. And also this breaks down my curology. Next is the B Hydra Intensive Hydrating Serum. It's pretty, it seems to do an okay job. I don't really know what purpose it serves. Like after I put everything on my face, I'm not sure that this makes a difference. And finally, the TLC Framboos Glycolic Night Serum. Ouch, 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 ouch. I was really, really hoping that this was going to be a, an even switch for my Sunday Rally Good Jeans. Which, by the way, there are no worries about this being a short video. Nope, no worries at all. A lot of people have these strong opinions about Sunday Riley and her cleanliness of her products because Think Dirty has their ingredients listed as being full of a bunch of parabens. They don't have parabens or phthalates in them. So I don't know where that information breakdown happened, but like, that's not true. <laughs> if you read the ingredients on her bottle, that they're not 
the ones that are listed, I don't know if something changed, but I sent them a screenshot of the ingredients on, on Think Dirty. I have like a, a, a big axe to grind with Think Dirty because I feel like they don't fact check well enough and people really hold them in high regard as like this authority on clean beauty. And honestly, you have to fact check everything for them and it's the glitchiest app in the world. They don't have so many products. I really don't trust Think Dirty. I'm gonna throw it out there. So um, do the research yourself. I really feel like Sunday Riley is not as much of like a dirty villain as people want to make them out to be. And I really like the way that their products perform. So I, I'm making a genuine attempt to move towards cleaner products, but I just don't think that Sunday Riley is as bad as everyone says that they are. Anyway, the, uh, the TLC Framboose Glycolic Night Serum is giving me gnarly dry patches. I've used it for like, you know, four days straight or something. And I know people are going to say, they're going to be like, you're not supposed to use an acid every night. The product needs to fit into my lifestyle. I use the same products every single day. That's just who I am. I will cycle out my masks every once in a while. I do use three face masks every day. <laughs> Confession. But I don't like that using this every day makes my face hurt and it gives me dry patches. And I am having some purging, which I'm not blaming these products for that, but there's obviously some disagreement between kind of my skin and probably a cleaner routine, to be honest. It's probably purging things because I'm moving towards a cleaner routine, or this might just be my singular menstrual zit that I get this month. I'm not sure. But the whole thing being, I don't see this as being a replacement for my good jeans. Not yet, anyway. I think that this is just a really aggressive product. And I get it. I get wanting to have something that's really strong. I don't know. It's totally a personal thing, but I just don't think that this product is good for my sensitive skin. And I know that a lot of people have commented. I, I remember one specific comment where someone was like, you know, Drunk Elephant might be really clean, but they're not very responsible with their packaging. None of their packaging is uh, recyclable with the exception of like one of their glass containers because it's also opaque and they're in uh, airless pumps. And so for some reason that's not recyclable. And then this is like a, a neoprene or something. And it just doesn't, I, I really don't understand why I needed all this plastic. Okay, next, this is kind of, total review, but my God, you guys, somewhere in the shuffle, I completely forgot how amazing the Ilia foundation is. This is the True Skin Serum Foundation. I was talking about all of these foundations in my end of the year video, and I kind of like had to stop for a second and be like, what's Ilia like? When I put it on my skin, what does it do? I don't remember. I'm cross-eyed with the amount of foundations that I tried kind of all close together. And this one just sort of fell between the cracks in terms of me categorizing it as, is it full coverage? Is it oil based? Is it a powder foundation? Like do you use it with a powder or is it better used on its own? Blah, blah, blah. I used this yesterday with a powder on top. By the way, the Curewise powder, I really shit all over it when I first like tried Curewise. I was just like, eh, you know, I think the foundation is amazing, but this powder is just powder. I don't really care. That powder, something about it agrees with every foundation that I have. It never gives me a cakiness. It never gives me a color on top of the skin. It just sets every foundation in the most gorgeous way and just gets out of the way. And I have to say, I freaking love that powder. It is the powder that I trust the most. You know how you can kind of tell not because you can necessarily articulate and enumerate like all of the different things and the ways that something differs from another. Like, oh, this powder is better because it has this ingredient, it does this, it does this. Like, it's more so how often you reach for it. It's literally just use case, just practicality. I reach for the Kiara's powder so often because I know I can trust it. No matter what makeup look I'm doing, I know that it's not going to get in the way. And there's definitely something to be said for that. But I digress about Kiarwise because you guys know how I feel about Kiarwise. The True Skin, I used this with the Kiarwise powder yesterday and it really knocked my lights out. I put it on my Instagram. I was like, oh my God, I forgot how good this foundation is. It's so beautiful and it is not cheap and I need to use it. It was $54. So um, I need to get back on using this, but it made my skin look so flawless today. I'm wearing the Lawless today. This is not the Ilia on my face. I just, I don't know. I'm trying to use the foundations that I have, but this 
Oh my god, and it was crazy because I put it up and then one of my viewers like commented and she was like, I bought this. And she's like, the first day that I used it, I don't really know what I did wrong because it like didn't like blow my mind. But she's like, now I won't use anything else. And when I run out, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's so, so, so pretty. But I do recommend going and getting matched because these are all very specific undertones. I feel like the undertones are very like committal. And so I would definitely go into Sephora and actually get yourself matched on this. Kind of hand in hand, I'm wearing this right now. So you guys know how I feel about that stupid, I don't even know where I put it, that stupid cloven hallow lip goo that we talked about. Um, it was the regrets video. Yeah, another person commented, I'm sorry, I'm gonna drag all the commenters who get under my skin. But the commenter who was like, does she like anything? I'm like, you do realize you're watching a regrets video. No? Okay, well, let me inform you. You're watching a regrets video. If you wanna go watch positive stuff, watch my best of video. This is the Clove and Hallow Concealer. The reason that I bought this is because one of you guys commented and you were like, yo, Khaki, you mentioned that you wanted a clean, creamy concealer. Clove and Hallow makes one and it's not very expensive. You were right. It is amazing. And it is actually so amazing that they keep running out of it online. So I had to like get on an email list to be told that this was going to be back in stock so that I could buy it. Bought it around the end of the year and I've just now started using it. And you guys, it's so beautiful. Look at it, look, look at my eyes, look around my mouth. The only thing, it doesn't seem to love being on top of kind of oilier foundations. It starts to kind of break up a little bit like around your pores, it just kind of freaks out. I'm not sure if that's because I used like the wrong setting spray or whether I, I haven't got a chance to really experiment with like whether using a primer would help. I haven't used a primer in a long time, but just at face value. Not only does this go on really, really beautifully, but I've been having a lot of trouble getting shade matched on cream concealers from the clean beauty brands. Like even the BioCorrect that I love this formula from Well People, it's not like the best shade. While very personal because our skin tones are all different, still the O2 shade, which is what I have it in, it's kind of this like warm peachy light ivory color. I think that it works really, really beautifully, especially on my like pale, regular, non-tan skin. I think that this is super, super pretty. And I feel like it cooperates really, really nicely with the Lawless that I'm wearing today. And I'm just very pleased with this. I'm like extra pleased with it in the context of having used that lip goo and hating it so much. And this just really, really knocking my socks off. This is beautiful and it's affordable. And thank you to the commenter who recommended this. All right, uh, small fail, small fail. And I'm not really sure whether this is a fail. I get advertised a lot of things on Instagram and I always try them. That's, it's my motto, you know, it's how I found Thrive. I really do like to game the Instagram algorithm to show me stuff that I can try on my channel, basically. People are like, I get so tired of being advertised to. I'm like, girl, I use that mechanism to my advantage. I click on every ad that I'm actually interested in or any kind of clean beauty product so that I can influence the algorithm so that it only shows me clean beauty products and then I can kind of take my pick of the litter. I don't necessarily buy everything. I know I just kind of spoke in hyperbole and said that I buy everything, but I don't buy everything. I just click on everything that I feel like falls into a certain category so that when they're building my little profile on you know who I am collecting my data spying on my life they're at least serving me products that I don't have to go into the legwork to find <laughs> basically as I scroll through my Instagram the ads are hyper 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 relevant to what I want to feature on my channel so essentially I'm gaming the system all that said uh, I bought this this is the Asarai Earth Tones Australian Red Clay Brightening and Detox Mask the ads are absurd they're just this girl wearing a Calvin Klein sports bra and this mask and just being like. And to me, it was just, it was super goofy, but they threw it to me so many times that I was like, all right, I'll buy it. And so I read about it, but apparently not enough because yes, it's very clean. It's very responsible. It's very all of that. It's, you know, fragrance free, toxin free, ethical, healthy, safe, not tested on animals, natural product, natural certified organic ingredients. 1% uh, for the planet, so they donate. Um, the only thing that I didn't do my research on for this is that it contains hydrolyzed wheat protein. It's not gluten-free. This sucks. It makes me afraid to use it on my face. If you don't know, I'm celiac, and I don't know whether using something with wheat in it hurts my face, but I'm scared to find out. 
and I've read about it and they're like if it gets in your mouth that's different but you know as long as you don't get it in your mouth or your eyes or like you know snort it up your nose you're probably going to be fine but in my experience when I would use shampoos that had hydrolyzed wheat protein in them my scalp would get really angry and so I'm just not sure I want to put this on my face what do you guys think Maybe I'll give it away. I have not used it. And even if I do use it, it's in a tube. It's not like I'm just like, you know, putting my germs back into it. So let me know. Let me know what you guys think. If like you guys are gluten intolerant, you're like, no, I use stuff with hydrolyzed wheat protein. Don't be such a baby. Okay. This slash this. This is the Luscious Cosmetics Spellbinder Makeup Setting Mist. High hopes. It is very drying. And one of you guys commented and said, it's going to be really good for people with an oily complexion. It is a Pakistani line. It is a line that, granted, I think they're made in Dubai, but the founder is Pakistani. The entire idea behind Luscious Cosmetics is that it is supposed to be very weatherproof and great for humidity and heat. And so... This is not super over drying. It has just denatured alcohol in it and you can kind of feel that. And what it does is actually like really beautifully set full coverage foundation. I don't think that this works very well for a light face of makeup. So it has not been working very well for me. It worked great today because I'm wearing Lawless, which is a full coverage foundation. I'm wearing a good bit of powder. I'm wearing a good bit of concealer. It really does help kind of bring everything back down when you have a good bit of makeup on. But if you don't, it's just going to dry your skin out and make you greasy. And so that has been my frustration with this and I need to find find a setting spray that works. I actually had a setting spray that I liked that I had made myself. One of you guys pointed out, if you don't stick it in the fridge and you don't have a preservative in it, it's going to just grow bacteria. And so I poured it out because I was like, uh oh, <laughs> I don't want to put a bunch of bacteria on my face. And it had been a couple of weeks. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to kind of just go back to the drawing board store on that and uh, and then we will do a video where I put you know one against the other but I want to know what the other one is going to be I want to find something that I really like to test against my homespun one so if you guys know of like a clean beauty setting spray that you really like let me know and also to the person who said you know you need to use a preservative in there what if I don't use my own water what if I just use rose water that I bought is that the same? Because they don't, they probably already have a preservative in it, right? Let me know. I think that we have one more thing and it is this. Let me just go ahead and clean this off because it's nasty. Are you guys familiar with these things? This is a goofy gimmicky product called, you know, a wet brush basically. This is the Crave Naturals wet brush. I went home for Christmas and I took a shower in my mom's shower and I grabbed this out of her shower caddy and I used it and like my knees buckled. <laughs> Do you guys, have you ever used one of those like little spider things that you just kind of like put on the top of your head and it makes you go all goosebumpy? It's like, you know, physical ASMR. That's what this feels like. It's like incredible. And then lo and behold, I unwrapped one. I think it was like in my stocking or under the tree or something. And um, you guys, this thing is amazing. Sometimes I just get carried away in the shower and just start scratching my back with it or my legs. I'm just like, <laughs> it just feels so good if you're one of those people who likes scratching. And if you do need to comb your conditioner through in the shower or whatever, and hi, um, my little Tiffany ring is so beautiful, but it catches my hair. And sometimes I just get really, really aggravated with it. And sometimes I'll take it off, but sometimes I will just use this instead of running my hands through my hair and just, you know, do it with the water or with the conditioner. And it's so great. It feels so good. And it does a really good job of kind of organizing my hair so that I don't have to like wrestle with it when I get out of the shower. So I just thought that this was worth a little mention because it's so stinking like innocuous. Like it feels really gimmicky, but it's actually really, really awesome. And it feels so good. 
Alright guys, so I think that that's all I have for you for this week's faves, fails, and finds this week. I mean, I guess it's been like a month since we did the Friday faves, fails, and finds. It's practically a monthly favorites that I just do whenever I feel like it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I love you today. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. I hope you've had a lovely week, and I hope you were looking forward to a delightful weekend. I love you very, 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 very much, and I, I hope that you have a, a good day. <laughs> what? I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.